On about my third visit, I met a family. I couldn't make out if they were mature parents, but together with a 56-year-old man and similarly aged wife were two preschool girls. The man was receiving treatment and was scheduled before me. His two girls constantly badgered him about being bored, and I could see the concentration on his face at trying not to pee himself. The mother tried her best to keep them occupied by telling them to pretend to be flowers growing. Be a seed, dear, be a seed. Now start to blossom. The staff were running behind schedule due to patients arriving slightly later than their time. The husband was called in, and four minutes later, a nurse rushed out of the room and back in with a bottle. The almost overflowing contents were brought out with a frustrated husband shortly behind. The poor man could not contain his desperation any longer, and so now had to drink more water and wait for another slot. I thought by the time he could go home, his grown daughters would be redwood trees. The next time we met, we got talking, and they said if only they could come later, they could get the girls to nursery as well as avoiding horrific traffic. I asked how much later that would need to be, and they said even only half an hour. That was simple. I'd change my time for theirs. The smile and relief on this man's face was instant, so much so that I looked at the floor to see if he peed himself again. And so I strolled through the next few weeks with a routine of daily trips to the hospital. The staff were ever ready to put anyone at their ease, and I noticed how quick the turnover between setting up for each patient's individual needs. Radiotherapy would be administered to a myriad of parts on the human body. The room was then adjusted with precision in minutes. I took in some cake and small bottles of champagne for the staff on my last day. The grateful staff thanked me for the cake, but were unsure if they could accept alcohol. I made my way through the now familiar corridors towards the exit. As I left the department, I heard a shout behind me, We can! We can accept alcohol! <laughs> I'd like to have seen that lunch break. Now, as I said, I think the medical profession have much to gain from putting me on related medical trials due to my age, which meant I became the target for any eager physician. I was next approached by a consultant who wanted me to consider hormone replacement therapy. It was explained that it was already known to help in the treatment of prostate carmen by reducing the amount of testosterone which this type of carmen would latch onto. The medical profession was now keen to discover how this might affect the results post-operation. I was invited into an office and given a booklet and DVD. I would be given time to think it through and be given a time to come back and discuss my thoughts. The next time I stepped into the office, the enthusiastic surgeon waited for my response. The parts that helped me make my decision were the possible mood swings, weepy moments and growing breasts that may happen with HRT. Now, although my Taekwondo students know me well enough, I don't think they'd appreciate it if after they'd worked hard sparring for an hour to be then subjected to me weeping. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't know why I'm crying. That was, that was beautiful. Look, I'm just going to the toilet to adjust my bra.